Just a minute, mister. You saw that it has that wonderful remedy that used to come here That's last... right. From the rock-bound coast of Maine to the sunny climes of California, from the snow fields of Montreal to the sand deserts of Mexico, Dr. Shaw is known. Troubles are over. Yeah, he's perfectly right. Dr. Shaw has done more for the ills of mankind than any single individual alive. Two bottles of cure. You'll be in the I greatest... I don't want to grow hair. I want to get rid of rheumatism. Oh, that'll cure you, my man. That will cure you. Do you mean to tell me that you can cure rheumatism by rubbing her tonic in my head? Well, uh... That's just the point. You don't rub it in your head. No? You, you drink it. Yes. After two doses, you'll jump five feet in the air, click your heels together and yell, yippee, and wonder what makes the music go round and round. <laughs> He's perfectly right. Why, you won't know yourself. You'll be a new man. How soon does the duck get here? Be patient. Be patient. Day in, day out. He's on the jump. Why, you'd be surprised if you knew how many people want to get it. You better step on it, brother. We're practically in the clutches of the law right now. This is the time you don't get away with it, Doc. Why, my good man, you must be laboring under a misapprehension. You must be more specific, or I'll be compelled to. Doc, I'm the one that'll be compelled to do something, and I'm going to do it. You're trying to skip without paying your bill. Why, Sheriff, that's ridiculous. That's preposterous. Sheriff, Doc Shaw has never cheated a man, a woman, or a child. Out of a penny. Well, Dr. Shaw, you're almost in the clear. Everything's out of the county except this tire. I'll have to take that. Well, now, Sheriff, if that tire will satisfy the mercenary merchants of your fair city, you're welcome to it. Thank you. Well, Doc, your generosity is only excelled by your good looks. Nice of you, Sheriff. Thank you. My good man, a rope won't remove that tire. What it requires is a wrench. And that's exactly what it's going to get.
That's it, boys. Go on there, boys. <laughs> Well, sir, son, I, I can't tell you I how much... I got a notion to lock you up. Who are you? I'm the sheriff of this county. You mean the sheriff of that county? Say, my good man, do you know that you're getting to be somewhat of a pest? Do you realize that we are no longer in a county over which you have jurisdiction? All right, gentlemen, you win. Let bygones be bygones. There. All right, that's better, sir. <laughs> Man, you know, I don't know how I can ever thank you for helping to extradite us from a somewhat embarrassing situation, Mr. Rep. Well, you can uh, call me Missouri. Oh, Missouri. Well, that's, that's my home state. Yes. Uh, what part are you from? If you're from Missouri, you don't have to ask any questions about it. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm just making conversation, my friend. That's all, just making conversation. Uh, you riding through? Yeah, looking for a job. Oh, uh, what kind of a job? Mining, lumber, wrangling horses? Well, I would take a job breaking Bronx, but I know cows pretty well. Uh -huh. Say, if you're really serious about that job, brother, Perhaps I can suggest something that would be mutually advantageous. Shoot. That's it, my boy, that's it. What's it? Shooting. I think you're making a mistake, Doc. Just because I don't carry a regulation gun is no sign that I'm a gunman. Oh, no, 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 you're wrong. No, you've got me wrong. What I mean to say is that I am in dire straits to secure the services of an expert marksman. Would I get paid? Paid? My friend, Doc Shaw has never cheated a man, woman, or child out of a single penny. Well, I might give it a trial. What? That's splendid, my boy, that's splendid, and you'll never regret it. All right, boys, come on, let's get going. How about some gas? Uh, uh, put a couple of gallons of my corn cure in that gas tank. That'll get us to Springfield all right. Go ahead. All right, come on. Oh, Susanna, now don't cry for me. Cause I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. I'm a going to Louisiana, my true love for the sea. It rained all night the day I left, the weather it was dry. The sun so hot I froze to death, Susanna, don't you cry. We won't be bothered tonight. This coordination is made possible only through the constant use of Dr. Charles Murray And it gives me pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, friends and neighbors, to introduce for the first time in your fair city an expert world marksman, Marvel, otherwise known as Missouri. Come in, give them plenty of time. We want to catch them red-handed. Now, uh, Brayton said that door would be open. Go ahead, make it quick. I'll cover you from out here. Yeah, but who are I tried again. Hurry.
Something's wrong. It won't open. What is that? Stand where you are. Your hurry. I want a few words with you. If that thing goes off, there'll be blamed few. Step out here on the light and let's get a look at you. Tex Weaver. Tim Ross. Well, say, I didn't hurt you, did I? No, no, the horse just threw me. Now, don't tell me you're on the other side of the fence. <laughs> Not a chance. Well, what are you doing chasing me? Are you back in harness? <laughs> Still answering questions by asking him, eh? What's oh. the excitement? There have been a couple of big bank jobs around here to stump the local authorities. So they put the government bloodhound on the trail, eh? Exactly. But this is no ordinary game. They were after $100,000 tonight. That's a lot of money. And the strange part of it is that the bank authorities were the only ones supposed to know about the money. Yet this afternoon, Braden gives us the combination of the safe and tells us to pick it up. Braden? That's a name that's not familiar to me. It wouldn't be. He cropped up after you resigned. I finally traced the outfit to Clearwater, where I've been putting him to bed every night and waking him up in the morning for the last six months. Well, haven't you got enough on him to run him in? Now, Brayton's not the brains of the game, and I haven't been able to find out who is. Well, I'd be glad to help you if I could, but I think I'd be more of a liability than an asset. You know, the way they spattered my face all over the front page of every newspaper in the country after the capture of Babyface Lloyd. And that's right. Sometimes the papers make it tough. But say, what are you doing in this neck of the woods? <laughs> I'm shooting my way from coast to coast with Doc Shaw's great medicine show. There isn't a nook and a hamlet in the country we won't play. Well, I'm heading back to report to Braden that, uh, due to a leak, the bank job was a failure. Well, you better make it convincing. Well, I'll see you in Clearwater and let you know what I find out. Tim, my boy, I'm afraid you're in this up to your neck. <laughs> Worse than that, I'm in over my head. Can I give you a lift back? No, I don't think it's best. Well, so long, fella. So long. I'll send you over a can of coffee. As long as the county's putting the bills, you may as well include a couple of ham and egg sandwiches. All right. Didn't get anything, did the sheriff? Plenty of lead. I was waiting for him, Mr. Murdoch. How did you know the bank was going to be robbed? Oh, this is Wiley Taggart, the territorial bank examiner. You can talk freely before him. I'm the original oyster. Nobody ever learned anything from me, not even myself. I was tipped off the attempt was going to be made, and it was. Looks like an inside job. Why, that's impossible. How about your cashier? Perfectly honest. The man has been with me for 10 years. Do you know his writing? Certainly. This look like it? That's the combination to the safe, but there's a mistake in it. Never mind the mistake. How about the writing? Is it Bradley's? Doesn't look like it to me. What do you think, Wiley? Well, not being a handwriting expert, it's difficult for me to say. Is it your writing, Mr. Murdoch? Why, of course not. Another stroke of genius like that, Braden, and we'll have the whole Department of Justice on our heels. I don't understand this. Weaver read this combination back to me before they left, and it checked. He's the only one that escaped, isn't he? Yeah. He stayed outside to see that they weren't disturbed. You're sure he didn't stay out there to see they wouldn't get away?
That's just a coincidence. What? Take a look. And you know, my dear friends, as well as I do, that long before the hand of man set foot in this country here, the Indians lived here. That show was in Springfield the night the bank job was bungled. I wonder if there's any connection. Well, how can there be? There's a leak somewhere. Check up on everybody, especially Weaver. I never did like his looks. If he isn't just what he seems to be, you know what to do. And uh, see that those fellows get out of jail before they talk. Hello, Tex. Hello, Tim. I want you to meet... Uh... Oh, I know him. You're Missouri, aren't you? Yes, why? Well, I'm Goldie Harris. I watched you perform last night. You know, you're quite expert with guns. <laughs> I'd better be if I'm going to get paid for it. <laughs> Tex and I were just having a drink. Won't you join us? That's always a good idea. <laughs> Say when. Oop. Here's a go. Missouri is a peculiar name, isn't it? Do you think so? Does it mean you're from Missouri? I thought people didn't ask that question in the West. Oh, women do everywhere. Say, where are you from? No one in particular. Bound for the same place, I suppose. Perhaps. No. We all love mysteries. <laughs> well, there's nothing mysterious about me. I wonder. Slim. Tell Goldie I want to see her. I'm afraid you're beginning to grow up, Goldie. It's a fatal sign when you begin wondering about men. Oh, I've been wondering for years. Don't forget, I used to slay hash in Brooklyn. <laughs> Runyon wants to see you. Thanks, I'll be right over. Well, do you think you can keep Mr. Missouri out of mischief? I'll do my best. I'll be seeing you, Missouri. Okay, Brooklyn. Who's that fellow you're talking to? Jealous again? What's his name? He calls himself Missouri. Well, would it be asking too much to forget Weaver for a while and see what you can find out about him? Why do you keep picking on Tex? You know how I feel about him. Oh, yeah, that's just the trouble. First time I've been alone since yesterday. Someone of the outfit's been on my tail every minute. Think they're suspicious about that Springfield job? I don't know. But something's in the wind. Two of the boys slipped out of town yesterday. Runyon's leaving this afternoon. I'd give my right arm to know where he's going. Tex? Well, thanks, old timer, for the tip. Tex has been telling me that we ought to lay off some of those card tricks we do on the show. That might hurt Braden's business if people realize how easy it is to deal from the bottom. Yeah, it's liable to get the boys thinking too much. Well, see you later, fella. are making a mistake. You'll be back eating on the county in the next few days.
Mr. Red will have to be patient. He wants to know when the money's gonna be put in the bank, Gonzales. Something that I do not know. When will you know, Enrico? <laughs> Just as soon as the guns and ammunition are delivered at the border, I will be notified. I will tell Martinez. He will arrange to deposit the money in the border town bank. And I will send a man to tell Mr. Brydon so he and Mr. Tiger can take it out. What are you doing here? Well, the same thing you are. And that is what? Making sure the boss isn't disturbed while he's talking with Gonzalez. Oh. So you're a bodyguard too, eh? Sure. Nice job. No work. Plenty money I like. You better keep your eye on the cabin. I'll cover the road. You think someone come? Well, you never can tell. All right, I watch the cabin. Oh. If you see someone, you shoot. I come and help you. Sure. What about? You're not as smart as you thought you were, Mazora. My father, this is a cross between Doc's liniment and his snake oil, with maybe a small dash of Indian remedy. Indian remedy? Sure, it's great stuff. A sure cure for Indian. Indian is some near something. But here's the prize packet and a luxury for you. Wow! What is that? Embalming fluid. Friends, I don't care whether you suffer from sciatica, rheumatism, lumbago, or gout. These remedies, my friends, are the finest remedies in the world today. I don't care what a doctor tells you. You know, friends, what some of these doctors don't know. What? Uh, pardon me just a minute, folks. I uh, say, listen, have you seen Mazora? No, I'm looking for him myself. Is he around? No, I haven't seen hide or hair of him. Shut if he doesn't get here, I'll have to do this sharpshooting for myself. Better get out there and the stall him, Doc. Uh, yes, I better say, let me know the minute he gets here, will yeah, you? Yeah, I'll go out and back and watch for him. Yeah, all right, thanks. Uh, oh, uh, friends, uh, speaking of marksmanship as we were just a minute ago, my dear friends and neighbors, my travels throughout the length and breadth of this fair land of ours has convinced me of one thing, and that thing is a pride, a pride that we have in the way that we men can handle a firearm. I don't care whether a man comes from the north, east, south, or west. That man has a pride in his ability to handle firearms. Now, you men of the wide open spaces have handled guns, perhaps uh, uh, by the time that you were able to walk, maybe even before that, I don't know. I know that you're accustomed to handling guns. I know that you pride yourselves on the use of firearms. And my friends, you are justified in that pride. Go ahead, Doc. I'm all in. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, my friend, but I can't do nothing for you. Doc Shaw's remedies will not reduce the size of ears. I'm sorry. Hey, Doc. Hey, hey. Where's the show? Glad to see you back, boys. We're glad to be back. 
Those jailhouses never did appeal to me. Hello, Goldie. Hello, boy. Still looking good. You haven't changed a bit. <laughs> well, now, I can't say the same for you. <laughs> Brayton inside. We cut down over the border left Springfield. I was afraid if we came straight back here, we'd bring a prey to G-Man with it. G-Man? Where did you get that idea? It was the G-Man that tipped the sheriff off about the holdup. Did you ever wonder why they didn't grab Weaver outside when they were waiting inside for us? Do you think he's a federal man? If he isn't, would he have gotten away? From now on, this town ain't gonna be a health resort for Tex Weaver. How about that fellow, Missouri? He and Tex have been pretty thick, you know. That goes for him, too. Hello, Goldie. Did you Tex, see? they know you're a federal man. Oh, why didn't you tell me? It wouldn't have made any difference. Well, I... I would have told you, only I didn't want you mixed up in it. But if you stay, you haven't got a ghost of a chance. You've got to get out of here quick. They know Missouri's working with you. And they won't hesitate to kill you both. Please go. Don't worry. And then, my friends, there was Daniel Boone, good old Dan, a man who knew more about the muzzle-loading type of rifle than any man of his generation. Of course, my friends, there, there were others. Yeah, there were the James Boys. There were the dogs. They were desperados, that too. They were men that lived and died by the gun. But, my friends, they were all crack shot, every single one of them. Yes, my friends, they were all great shots. But my friends, you haven't seen nothing yet. Ladies and gentlemen, I esteem it a great privilege and honor to introduce to you the world's greatest rifle and revolver shot of the world, Masora, the marvel of marksmanship. too tightly in your fingers because the impact of the bullet's liable to number. Perfect. Shoot when he shoots. Ah, that's better. Thank you. 
proof to you that he did it on purpose. I didn't know what he did. Then that kind of fair man believed it was an accident, are you? You did it deliberately. He murdered Chuck Weaver. Come on, let's bring him up. Stand where you are. Don't let anyone come any closer. Doc, look after him, will you? That man Weaver that's referred to in that telegram was a friend of mine. They think I killed him. But I know he was murdered by the men who attempted to hold up the Springfield Bank a while ago. Why don't you arrest him? I haven't enough evidence. And if I did, it would only undo everything that he accomplished. He was still looking for one man. I don't understand why you should be telling me this. Because your bank is the next on their list. That would be a foolish move on their part. We keep very little cash on hand. I might as well be frank with you, gentlemen. Mr. Martinez, the Department of Justice knows that you're trying to smuggle guns across the border. Mr. Crowley, it also knows that Martinez is going to deposit a quarter of a million dollars in your bank to cover the purchase of those guns, and that you're acting as his agent. The responsibility is entirely mine, Mr. Ross. I did not take Mr. Crowley into my full confidence. Don't be foolish, Eduardo. Ross knows that banks are not conducted in that haphazard fashion. Do you know what your government is going to do about us? Well, I think when the Federal Department gets my report, they'll drop the case. That's mighty white of you, Ross. My friendship for Mr. Martinez blinded me. I can easily understand that. You see, Weaver and I were friends. There's hardly anything we wouldn't have done for each other. Do you mind telling me which one of my countrymen betrayed me? Enrique Gonzalez. Do either of you know a man by the name of Taggart or Braden? The only Taggart I know is the Territorial Bank Examiner. What sort of a looking fellow is he? About 38, rather tall, smooth face, black hair, and gray eyes. Mm. Thank you. Of course, I can depend on both of you to keep this whole matter confidential. Certainly. One thing more. See that Gonzalez, nor anyone representing him, leaves this town. Hmm. You may depend on that, Mr. Ross. Thank you. Well, good day, gentlemen.
He's Senior Taggart. He has arrived yet? I told you yesterday. I don't know, Mr. Taggart. That is very strange. Sure you got the name right? Of course I got the name right. There can be no mistake about that. What's this guy Taggart do? That is a very strange question coming from you. Braden owns this place. Maybe it's him you're looking for. Braden? Well, I will talk to this Mr. Braden. Perhaps he can tell me where Mr. Taggart is. He ain't in right now. Well, then why you tell me about him? If you'll be in any minute, stick around. Stick around? Yeah. <laughs> I know. You want for me to stay here, eh? Yeah. Oh, well. Listen, brother. We're all crazy about her. You better be careful. You're very kind, senor, for look after me. I'm not worried about you. It's a mess of run you will make of this place if you don't lay off. Goldie, I wanted to ask you about... Where were you last night? You're getting quite ferocious since you killed Tex, aren't you? Who told you that? I don't have to be told. See, I know you. Buenos dias, senorita. Good morning, Jose. I'm not expecting for seeing you here this morning because when I'm taking you home last night, you were telling me that you do not get up very early in the morning. Oh, I was up at the crack of dawn. Oh, so? Well, then maybe now you will have a little wine with me, no? <laughs> oh, what? Why you laugh from me? Well, you asked me if I would want some wine, and then you answer for me and say I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the way I'm speaking English, huh? Uh. But I can talk him more better. Can you? Sure, I will ask you in the right way, now you listen. Uh. Senorita Goldie, you will doing me the honor for share a little bottle of wine with me? Ah, senor, I should be delighted. Nah. <laughs> Wait a minute. I got nothing to say about this. My friend, I think you are forgetting yourself. Maybe nobody else is going to be so foolish as try something like that, huh? Oh, senorita, I'm so sorry for bringing you in this bottle of brawl. Maybe now you will have this bottle of wine with me, huh? Sure. <laughs> See, what tender. You bring us a bottle of vino blanco, huh? Ah, oh, that's better.
seem to find that coin very interesting, Jose. Yes. I'm trying to figure it out how this came in your possession. I picked it up the night you shot it out of Tex Weaver's hand. You are positive of what you speak, eh? I know about a lot of things. That is very interesting. You know. You are not Jose Fernandez. No. I know you and Tex Weaver were friends. He came up on that platform the night he was killed to warn you of danger. You are here to finish what he was doing. How oh, you know so much? I love Tex Weaver. I knew he was a federal man and I know who killed him. But I can't prove it. Who you figure out do this? Runyon. The man you followed across the border. And you don't have to ask me how I know that either. I'm the one who told Tex and he told you. All right. You win. Now tell me. Who is Braden? He's the man who runs this place and he... There he comes now. Get to Crowley at the Border Town Bank. Tell him Tim Ross said to expect visitors tomorrow. And that's what I'm telling my brother Juan. That brother Juan for me is the <laughs> best fellow. You waiting to see Mr. Taggart? Si, senor. Waiting for you in my office. Ah, ah si, senor. You will excuse me, please. Yeah. I'll be back. Ah. say that Mr. Taggart was here, but I do not see him. I'm Taggart. Well, that's in your not a question, but <laughs> you want not the Mr. Taggart I'm looking for. Do you know Taggart? Oh, well, not personally. Then how do you know this isn't the man? Well, I have his description from Senor Gonzalez and... <laughs> He is nothing at all like him. When is this, senor? All right, Fred. Wait in the other room until I call you. You're from Gonzales? Si, senor. The money will be in the bank or tomorrow. What money and what bank? What, you do not know, senor? I want to see if you do. Senor Martinez will put this money in the bank or in border town tomorrow morning. I guess he's from Gonzales, all right. Bring Runyon in here. Runyon. Make sure this fellow doesn't get out of your sight all night. Bring him with you tomorrow morning. Hmm. You should not trust me, eh, senor? You're a very foolish man, because this money will not remain in the bank for very long. That's all, Fernandez. Midnight. We'll drift into Border Town in twos and threes in the morning in order not to attract attention. Be sure everyone is there by 11. At 11.05, you, Bob, and Jim go into the bank. The rest of us will scatter on the outside and cover you. When you get the money, head north and don't stop until you cross the border. Is that clear? Yeah. There won't be any slip-up. There better not be. 